So we have uh, Ed Liberati with Hydro Technologies. He'll give us a presentation on 25-year bridge deck preservation using fast-tracked hydro demolition and LMC overlays. So please welcome uh, Edward. Thanks. Let's see. I did that one. Yeah, I'm going to talk about, um, like Travis said, 25-year bridge deck repair and preservation using total deck surface. And I underlined fast track hydro demolition. Now that's the buzzword I want you guys to uh, follow as I do my presentation. Um, everywhere in the country, we have the bridge deck deterioration project problem. You can see a job here in Richmond, Virginia that we recently overlaid with uh, hydro demolition and latex concrete. Here's one in um, North Carolina on 40 that we did five or six years ago. Here's another one in North Carolina, Plymouth, that was over a mile long, this bridge, and uh, they needed a fast fix because the detour was very long, and we were able to do this mile-long bridge in just 30 days, complete restoration. New York, everywhere I drive, I look at bridge decks. It's just a habit I have as an engineer. I'm sure most of us are like that. And this is what you see, patches, patches, spalling, cracking, deterioration. This is South Carolina. This is a job we just did last night, a first job that they've done in a long time. Bridge was in horrible shape. They were putting in asphalt, concrete, all kinds of patches. Our guys went through there in one night and did a large area of this, and they're going to be putting the latex on tonight. Pretty cool. Uh, but, you know, where are we here for? Bridge deck preservation. Uh, bridge deck preservation. Um, Hydro Technologies has been in business over 40 years. Modified concrete has been in business since 1962, making latex modified concrete. So our, our company's history has always been bridge deck preservation. And what we've learned is by taking a systematic approach, we're getting 25 years out of our latex overlays. What we're seeing is Ohio, which is a big latex state, would in the 60s build a lot of their bridges. In the early, mid 80s, they put the first generation latex overlays on these bridges. Now we're putting second generation latex overlays and their goal is to get 75 years out of these bridge decks, but who knows, maybe it'll be you know beyond my time, but there may be third overlays because we're finding out how well these overlays preserve the bridge decks. Uh, a little bit of history in the United States, North Carolina had a huge amount of latex overlays they did in the periods of 12 through 15. Pennsylvania continues to be a leader in latex overlays. I mean, we're, we just bid a 30,000 square yard job, 12,000 square yard job last letting. There's one next letting. Ohio continues just to be a leader in this stuff, one of the largest. But you can see, I just went through and listed all the states that we worked in just last year. So it's so not a lot out here in the West like, um, it was previously discussed, but um, it is a very, very strong bridge deck preservation method that's been used, like I said, since 1962. Um, I have a booth here, and I do have copies of some special provisions if anybody's interested. And um, latex overlay would be the one special provision. Fast track hydro demolition will be the other. They're all square yard pay items, which is easy for you guys, length times width. The only cubic yard pay item is the variable depth latex, and that's the amount, that's all the deteriorated concrete we're gonna take out of your slab, and how this is set up to pay in these specifications is material cost only. So if you run into a really bad deck that you underestimated the deterioration, you're only gonna be paying the materials to place it back with the latex. We also include in these specifications the selective removal hydro demolition robot settings. Stop by my booth if you want a copy of those or on our website they're available for printing out. So now the first part of my presentation is going to be about the hydro demolition. It's a mechanical process where we use a controlled water jet to remove deteriorated concrete from a bridge deck. What happens is rapid erosion occurs when the jet hits the deck and the cement matrix and the washed away. It doesn't cut the stone, the stone's too hard. The jets attack on the weakened cement between the aggregates. 
And by properly calibrating the hydro demolition robot movements, which is detailed in the specification, we can achieve what is known as selective removal, where we're going to leave you a rough bondable surface on your bridge deck for the new overlay to bond to. And at the same time, with one pass of the machine, we're going to selectively take out all the bad concrete from your deck. Some of the applications, the main thing I'm going to be talking about is surface preparation for latex overlays. But we also have done large patch jobs, full depth removals, selective portions of reinforced concrete from any type of structure. We've worked with shipping piers, factories, dams, parking garages, tunnels, many, many other different reinforced concrete applications. Here's a picture of a full depth removal we did. You could see as the hydro demolition jet concentrates long enough on the deck, it'll go all the way through. The contract, the state marked out the areas they wanted done full depth on this bridge. We blew them out. Contractor put them all back. Expansion joint, back wall removals. Cutting areas over reinforced concrete beams or steel I-beams that have sheer stud connectors, your composite decks. You want to replace those decks, you either got to jackhammer all that concrete above the beams or you can use uh, hydro demolition. There's some picture of some patching we did, the pour back. Uh, vertical hydro demolition has become very, very popular. We have robots now that can extend to any height with platforms and access platforms. But you can see we achieved the same thing, selective removal of bad concrete while leaving a rough bondable surface for the new concrete surface to adhere to. Here's big hammerhead pier. This was all in Illinois was all set up to be done by jackhammers. And the guy did one of them, and he was like, there's got to be a better way. Called us. We came in. We were able to take out all that concrete like five times faster than it would have taken the jackhammers. Here we are doing it on a big turn back wing wall. Here we are doing work that kind of worked with one of our other partners here, Vector. They uh, installed um, anodes to that bridge, to that abutment. We took out one section, they, they, it was so bad, we had to do it in three lifts so that the stability of the uh, abutment there wasn't compromised. Tunnel work, this is in uh, Pittsburgh. We did two twin tubes over a mile long, took off all of the existing coatings from the wall and exposed the existing concrete there that was built in the 1920s so that they can shotcrete a new finish on that, paint it, so that it was going to last many, many more years. So I'm going to concentrate now on the fast track surface, getting your deck ready for a latex overlay. There's no faster way to prepare a bridge deck. Jackhammers won't compare. We selectively remove deteriorated concrete only from your bridge deck. We're going to leave a very high rough and bondable surface. Chloride buildup around rebar is essentially removed. With proper milling, you're going to only have sound concrete remaining. You're going to have a very bondable surface. That's the number one thing for any overlay. It must bond to the surface. If debonding occurs, any type of overlay will be removed or will fail, I should say. And it exposes and cleans your reinforcing steel and does not damage it like jackhammers will. The first thing you do with hydro demolition is you calibrate the equipment. You can see here, it was a milled surface. We took off one inch beforehand, and this called for a quarter inch fast track hydro demolition surface. So you find a good area of the deck. We tried to find one on this deck. It was a pretty bad deck. But in the good area of the deck, you should only be providing a rough bondable surface. Then you take those same settings, and what I'm talking about is the flow rate, the pressure, the step of the robot, the speed the jet goes back and forth. You want to determine them by trial and error so that with one pass of the machine, you're going to now pass over your bridge, and if the deck is good, you're going to leave that rough bondable surface, but at the same time, you're going to selectively take out the deteriorated concrete from your structural slab. Anything that's weakened below 4,500 PSI should come out. 
Once those settings are achieved, you now run production over the whole deck, the total surface. You run it over, you're going to be left with the debris, just like you see in the picture. Once you're done and you clean it up, if you're properly calibrated equipment, one pass of the machine is going to leave you the rough bondable surface in the sound areas of the deck, and at the same time will selectively remove all the bad concrete. This is, I mean, this process is for doing bad bridge decks. And this isn't just putting a waterproofing on your bridge deck. This is a structural repair to your bridge. Once you mill an inch off that bridge deck, you're reducing the load rating on your bridge deck. Unless you replace it back with concrete, your bridge decks are essentially lesser of a load rating because the thickness of the deck is there. But with the latex, you get a composite 6,000 PSI concrete that bonds to this existing deck fills in all those bad areas of concrete, thus increasing the strength, durability, every aspect of the bridge deck for the next 25 years. Here's a bridge in St. Louis. They wanted it repaired with hydro demolition. After we cleaned it up, no delamination, all bondable surface. But this is what they wanted. They wanted a latex overlay to protect this bridge for another 25 years. Here's uh, I-40 over the Mississippi River connecting Tennessee to Arkansas. Very bad bridge deck. Lots of patching was on it, lots of spalls. We milled an inch. We came through and did the hydro demolition. And you could just see how much bad concrete came out of this deck. Getting closer, we had a lot of rebar exposure, but that's fine. That's, the goal is to get the bad concrete out, replace it, with a high strength concrete overlay. Getting closer, you could see selective removal here. Rough bondable surface started transitioning down, went all the way under the rebar actually. You don't have to sound the deck. The jets find everything. You don't have to do determination of deteriorated deck areas. The water jets find everything. Here's a deck in Ohio. They put more salt on their roads in northern Ohio than anywhere. That, that we milled down an inch, that you, you were almost peeling the, the concrete off. It was so chloride contaminated. But after running the hydro demolition robot off of it, you could see it finds the bad concrete until the jet is bouncing off a hard concrete. It will keep digging deeper into your deck. Here's a bridge deck in uh, Pittsburgh we did it about six or seven years ago. For a while in Pittsburgh, they were constructing their br new bridge decks with latex overlays on them. Thirty years later, we peeled that, that latex overlay off. We almost had no delamination under it. Selective removal. Just think if you were sounding that. You would have found that. You would have put your orange patch around there. You would have started jackhammering. The hydro demolition robot found every bit of bad concrete out of there, with the exception of an old patch there you can see that you knock that out with a lightweight jackhammer. Again, there's our really good picture of selective removal, hydro demolition with one pass. Afterwards, you power wash the whole bridge deck and uh, you're ready for your overlay. A little bit more about hydro demolition before I get into the latex. The equipment consists of three pieces of equipment that can be mobilized anywhere in the country. You saw where we work basically almost every state in the Midwest and the East. The pump unit is the power unit of the whole process. We're going to take water from either a hydrant or tankers. We're going to pump this water up to settings between 15,000 and 20,000 PSI. We're going to throw it at this minimum 55 gallons a minute. These are the selective removal settings we have determined. There's one of our pump trucks. You could see the water comes into that storage tank on top of the truck. It filters, and then it goes through a pump unit. You could see it's like a semi. You get it on the job site, park it, connect up your water source, connect up your robot. There's your water source. Inside, there's a, there's a pump. This pump is a Hamelman pump. It'll take that water from the hydrant, and it's run by a 1,000 horsepower Caterpillar engine. It's going to take that water from the hydrant, pressurize it to upwards of 20,000 PSI, 50 to 80 gallons a minute. And it's going to take that water now and send it to the hydro demolition robot. 
The hydro demolition robot, per specification, must be computerized, self-propelled, and that it should always run consistently. You always want the jet exposure time to be the same throughout the whole deck. Controls allow the operator to control the removal depth, and you can use different types of heads on these things. We prefer a direct impact head where we take all that water at 20,000 PSI, 80 gallons a minute, and put it through a quarter inch oscillating jet that hits your bridge deck about two inches above the deck. Fast track, it's highly productive, very productive. Here's some pictures of our robot. You can see in the back there the computer. They're eight foot wide. They got a steel shell around them to prevent flying debris and to protect traffic. I heard in one of the sessions today they were worried about using hydro demolition uh, next to traffic. Well, we, we've got every safety precaution necessary to prevent flying debris. We, we do not break windshields or damage cars. Here we are working over traffic, right next to traffic, behind barrels, one foot away. Self-propelled machine, once it's set up and running, it'll cover the whole deck. Here's one of our new Conjet units. Just the, the, the technology keeps getting better and better. Production gets better and better. The costs aren't rising. The third piece of equipment you're going to get on a job is the vacuum unit. Of course, we have all that debris on the deck. It has to be cleaned up fast, and you have to do it fast because on a hot, sunny day, all that debris will re-adhere to the deck. Here's one of our vac trucks. We've got a sled on both sides of the truck that sucks up anything, brick-sized pieces of concrete, and at the same time, specifications call that that's washed, washes the deck and removes all debris at the same time. So when you put this all together, there is a method. It's called the fast track hydro demolition bridge deck overlay method. We're gonna get 25 years minimum out of these bridge decks. This method consists of four steps. Number one, you do the mechanical milling, one inch to an inch and a half. That's fast. You lo self-loading all that debris into trucks. Of course, when you've done this mechanical milling, you've taken one inch off of your deck. Your deck thickness goes from nine inches to eight inches, so you've now lost, uh, you know, your load. It's, the loads aren't as good at that point, so you want to put a latex overlay to achieve the loads back to where they are. Here's some milling pictures taking the one inch. We prefer to use smaller milling machines. There's one thing I'd never like seeing on a bridge deck is someone bringing a eight foot wide, 150,000 pound milling machine. This is what we use, four foot wides. They weigh about 35,000 pounds. You have the proper cutting teeth on there for cutting concrete. That's the kind of milling machines you want on your bridge decks, not big eight foot widers that are gonna leave micro cracks under your overlays that are gonna damage the bond interface between the overlays. We want a long-term bond. Like I said, these machines will self-propel or self-load into trucks. We, 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 we furnish the offset one so we can get right against walls, right along scuppers, self-load into trucks. You can see in that picture on the right, that's the phase one latex overlay. We're working on phase two now, right in Indianapolis. Once all that milling is done, specifications call that all that debris needs to be cleaned up, just like that. This is a bridge deck in New York we did. A lot of deterioration. Took an inch off the bridge deck, we're putting an inch back, inch and a half back. Step two, after you do the bridge deck milling, which is a square yard pay item, length times width, you do the hydro demolition, again a square yard pay item. You don't hydro for depth, it can be, get very expensive when you, I mean a lot of you states want to say, we need the rebar exposed. We want to be one inch below the bar. Prices are four times higher when you want to do that. With fast track hydro demolition and latex overlays, you do not have to get to the bar. I have testimonial letters from BASF company who supplies the latex material, Dow Chemical, Styron, Trinzio, all saying they don't want jackhammers 
sh exposing re rebar because it causes micro cracks, damages re-steel, destroys the bond interface, and that's what we don't want from the latex industry. We want a long-term bond. Here's some of the hydro demolition pictures. Step two, doesn't matter how much depth we take out, how much debris we take out, you guys are just paying us per square yard. Includes everything, cleanup, water control, jackhammer work, trim work, square yard pay item. Some more pictures of the hydro demolition, job sites. Step three is the final cleanup of the bridge deck. I showed you some pictures there that you have to do this in a quick method or all that debris and slurry will dry and re-adhere to the deck. So just summarizing the fast track, you're going to get speed. You're going to get a very high quality deck prep. We remove chloride contaminated concrete that's weak. We don't damage re-steel. We have a very bondable service. Because the work's done so fast, you have two types of cost savings, long term, immediate because traffic control and road user cost savings. But then you have the long-term savings because you're getting this great bond for your latex overlay. You get these overlays the last 25 years, and then you save a lot of money, maintenance-free. And we're replacing jackhammers, a lot lower noise levels. Fugitive dust is becoming a huge thing, and silica. I don't know how much of an issue that is with your states, but silica dust is becoming more and more on becoming a big item on the OSHA radar. And... Uh, they're wanting jackhammer guys to wear masks now and stuff, which is almost seems impossible to do. And here's our typical jackhammer crews out there hammering. These are the damage that we all know it does to your decks. It's a vibration method. It damages rebars when those guys hit them. It definitely micro cracks in your decks. It's very labor intensive and it's slow and noisy kind of just a small detail that I thought was very probably accurate of what happens to a deck after jackhammering. A couple of uh, microscopic pictures here showing a micro crack in the deck. That's going to be a failure under any overlay. These get caused by the, mic the milling, jackhammering. The good thing about the hydro is when it goes over it, it takes it all. I would never want to put an overlay on a milled surface knowing that micro cracks could be in there because that's where your potholes, debonding, bond interface problems can occur. And there's a picture of a deck that's sound and perfect for a new overlay. Okay, getting to the end here. Now we have step four, placement of the new overlay. You went through all this process. You got your deck perfectly ready. Now it's time to put on the latex overlay. A couple things about latex. It was designed by Dow Chemical Company in the 1960s. We have tens of thousands of installations all over the country that are still doing great. There's no material out there that can make that claim or overlay material that has been used more or longer than latex overlays. It's going to extend your, your bridge deck life 25 years, maintenance free. That's key. You don't want to get out there and have to do maintenance after you do this new overlay. So that is what we have seen over our 50 years we've been doing this. It's very, very adhesive. It develops great bond strengths to the existing deck. It becomes monolithic with the deck and composite and now becomes an integral part of the strength of your deck. Not like epoxies, polyesters. Those are just overlay waterproofers. This is a structural repair. It shields the deck because it's very impermeous. When you add the latex modifier to the deck, I'll explain that in a second, it makes our material almost completely impermeable to chlorides. It's got greater flexural strengths than conventional concrete, a lot of wear resistance, skid resistance, it's great, and it has a low water cement ratio. This is what we like to uh, attribute to uh, prevention of shrinkage cracking, but cure is so important, which I'll talk about. Here's your standard mix design. You got your fine aggregates, your coarse aggregates per cubic yard, cement, seven bags, 658 pounds a cubic yard. It's a structural concrete. It achieves minimum 4,500 in, in 28 days. What I see is in excess of 6,000. 
Here's what makes it the modifier, modified concrete. They're adding latex emulsion to every cubic yard at 24 gallons per cubic yard. The latex emulsion com is, consists of water and tiny butadine polymer latex particles. When this is added to the concrete, it becomes very, very sticky. And when the concrete hydrates and all the free water escapes, all of these particles are left in the air voids of the concrete. And that's what makes it very, very impermeable. Just a couple pictures of some installations. There's our typical mobile mixers that you use for the latex concrete. You place it with a standard bidwell machine. That's a yield check for any state employee at any time to ensure that you're getting the proper yield. I like to think that all latex overlays in the summer should be placed at night, but there are charts that tell you exactly the proper conditions based on the wind, the relative humidity, and also the temperature. Pushes you into night. If people are trying to do these during the daytime, you're asking for shrinkage. Fogging system should be used. I talked earlier about the cure, wet burlap. We make three times our early strength latex will cure in three hours, be traffic ready, three hour wet cure. If we use a type three cement, two days, one wet, one 24 hour wet period, one 24 hour dry period. And if we use type one cement, it's a 48 hour cure. So there's different costs associated with them based on what you need. Just some more cure pictures continuous wet cure we want to see, and we want to see the plastic over them. And what are you left with? You're left with a structural concrete surface that's bonded to your existing deck. You've had all of the bad concrete of your deck removed, and this new overlay has been placed on it. The nice thing about uh, latex concrete, there are suppliers all over the country who supply it. We have plenty of competition with it. Um, we're never worried about when you mill it up someday that it will, could potentially be a hazardous material and require special handling. And also, um, in conclusion, if you wanted to do it on a single weekend, you have a bridge deck in the middle of Denver here that's really bad, we would use the very early strength LaTeX. And let me tell you, this is so popular now, we work almost every weekend of the year. And there's your typical weekend. Friday night, you're going to start, 9 o'clock. You're going to do that. And by noon or 2 on Sunday, you have your bridge deck open to traffic again. It's a very popular way to repair your bridge decks for 20 years. There's my contact info if you have any questions. And also, um, I have a booth here if you want to stop by and talk. And I have specs, videos, anything you want to know to learn more about latex overlays and fast track hydro demolition. Just a real quick question. I've heard hydro demo and fast track yeah. hydro demo. What is the big difference between the two? Fast track hydro demolition is where you want to do one pass of the machine and one swipe of the jet to achieve a rough bondable surface. And what I'm talking about with that is between the aggregate and the mortar, you're going to be one inch. But at the same time, you selectively remove all the bad out of your deck. Deep cut hydro demolition is where you want to go in and expose all the reinforcing steel, like a minimum of three quarter inch underneath. With latex, you don't have to do that because of the bond strength you get with it. Partially exposed reinforcing steel is perfectly acceptable. Stop by my booth, I could talk more about that for sure. Thank you very much.